You know, with the risk of a market crash looming overhead, a lot of people ask me and a lot of people are wondering, where should I put my money? Where should I invest it that would make it safe? Well, today on Invest with Wesley, that's exactly what I want to talk about. Let's get into it. Okay, so for starters, with most of what I'm going to be talking to you about today, I'm tackling depressions and extreme downturns in the market. If you're just interested in protecting your money against normal recessions and normal corrections, then honestly, all you have to do is diversify a bunch of different sectors. You don't necessarily have to diversify even into international funds, although it is highly recommended. It's not 100% necessary just to beat corrections and small downturns. But if you're interested in protecting your money or protecting your wealth in the event of a depression era event, then that's what we're going to be talking about today. So in my opinion, if we are going to set up a portfolio or set up a strategy to counter the effects of depression era like events, then in my opinion, your best bet is to focus on increasing your cash flow. These things could be very simple, like paying down your debts. The less money that goes towards debt payments, the more money you have in your wallet. But you can even go one step further and invest in things like real estates, whether it's actual tangible properties or real estate investments trusts. You can invest in good, solid dividend producing companies, private equity in businesses, or even private lending. And the last two, the private equity businesses and private lending really just depend on how much cash you have or how much money you have available to play with. And lastly, another great option is junk bonds. Now, I know the name sounds counterintuitive like junk bonds, but if you know what you're looking for, you can actually select a bond that pays a bit higher of an interest rate or a bit higher of a yield than you would ever get if you selected an investment grade bond like a AAA rated bond. Now, like I said, I set up some of these strategies to beat depression era events. And there is no better example of a depression era event than the Great Depression. So let's brush up on our history when it comes to the Great Depression and then we'll go into the strategy. Now let's just say it's 1929 and you are the single-handedly most unlucky investor ever. You put all of your money in in 1929 right before the Great Depression hit. From the high of 1929 down to the low of 1932, you would have lost 89% of your entire portfolio's worth. And worse than that, it would have taken another 30 years later just for markets to return to what they were before the Great Depression. So just to break even, you're stuck in the hole for 30 years. Now obviously that does not sound like anything anyone would ever want to do, and rightfully so. But there's one thing that you're leaving out. You're only focusing on the numerical value of the principal that you've put into these investments. Meaning you put in $10,000, you got X amount of shares, and you're only focused on the value of those shares, not the net income or the net value of your investment combined. Now companies within reason will usually raise their dividends in the event of a downturn or a correction or even during a recession. Companies will raise the dividends that they give in order to entice investors to stay invested with them. Now, although in the Great Depression example, dividends did fall, it took a couple years for the dividends to catch up with the losses that the market saw a year and a half prior. But although the Great Depression is the most notable depression, it's not the only depression that this country has had in its market. We had a depression in the 80s, in the late 90s with the dot-com bubble, and then another depression hit with the coronavirus pandemic hitting and causing markets to tumble. So there's been several different depressions throughout history. And let me just say, there's been a couple different dividend producing companies that have never changed their dividend and never missed a dividend, even through depressions. And those are the companies that you wanna focus all your attention on when you're looking to set up a stock portfolio that can weather the storm of depression era events. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, dividend producing companies don't grow as quickly as growth stocks that don't give a dividend. And historically, that is very true. Instead of holding on to their cash reserves and using that to further grow their company, blue chip stocks that produce a dividend will give a portion of its profits away to its investors, which obviously means less money that they keep to grow into the future. Now, what you don't wanna do is find a company that gives all of its profits away in a dividend and keeps hardly anything for themselves. Because in the event that another Great Depression happens, these companies won't be able to support the amount of dividends that they're giving out. 
And then those sweet dividends that you were used to receiving will one day go away because this company either goes out of business or has to extremely cut back on the profits that they give their people. For the past decade or so, the big hype when it comes to investing is growth stocks. Moreover, tech stocks, but growth sector in general. People don't really care about dividends anymore. Instead, they're focused on the heightened gains that they receive in the growth sector. And that's all well and good, and I'm not knocking growth stocks whatsoever. But even though they don't get talked about much anymore, dividends play a giant role in the overall returns that you could receive in the market. In fact, if you look at a chart that dates back to before World War I and averaged all the returns throughout, dividends make up an extra 40% of profits on someone's portfolio. So if you are a strictly growth investor, then you're automatically missing out on an additional 40% in profits on average. But pre-World War I all the way to the present is an extremely long time frame. Let's talk about a closer time frame and let's talk about an example where there's two different booms and busts in the same decade. This example is going to cover what investors call the lost decade. And the lost decade is from early 2000 to 2009. However, the example I'm going to give you is from January of 1999 to December of 2008. If in January of 1999, you invested $100 into the companies that make up the Dow Jones, then fast forward into December of 2008, your $100 now has a value of $95. Roughly a 4.5% fall over the course of a decade. Now you gotta remember, from January of 99 to 2008, you see the entire boom of the dot-com bubble and its bust, as well as the boom of the next bull market and the real estate bubble, and as well as its bust. So considering how volatile the markets were in that decade, only losing 4.5% really doesn't seem all that bad, but it still is a loss after an entire decade of waiting. And if you were invested in nothing but growth stocks, this would be your reality. But let's factor in dividends and see if your reality changes. If you factor in the dividends that the Dow Jones paid during that same time frame, sure, the value of your account or the value of the principal in your portfolio is now $5 less or 4.5% less. If you factor in the dividends you would have received in cash, your total value between the market value plus the dividends received would have been all the way up at $117, making your total profit almost 18%. Now remember, now remember, this is taking the dividends as cash and counting it with profit. This is not you using a drip system to automatically reinvest your dividends. This is you taking your dividends as an actual check and using it. Obviously, if you reinvested those dividends, then you could have bought at the lows and then when, obviously if you were using a drip system, every time the Dow Jones companies paid you those dividends, you'd have automatically reinvested them, thus capturing buying some of these stocks at their lows in the end of, thus using those dividends to automatically buy some of these companies at their lows throughout both the dot-com bust and the 08 housing market bust. You'd have automatically bought on sale, thus when the market recovers and your initial value goes back to that same $100 you started with, the added value that you would received from dividend reinvesting would be that much greater. So if you're a long-term investor and you're a little bit scared of where the markets are going and you think there's going to be another Great Depression era-like event or maybe even another lost decade where, where the stock market actually returns negative instead of positive over the course of this decade, then set up a well-diversified portfolio that pays as high of a dividend as possible in order to capture some of that free cash flow that you're going to need to reinvest and support the losses of principal that are inevitably going to happen. Now, I don't want to give you actual percentages that you should have weights in your portfolio with because that's a little too precise of advice for regulators to be comfortable with. But I can say if you're building a portfolio that is going to protect yourself from depression era events, then you should be focusing all of your equity, which means your stocks, on very well established cash flowing dividend producing stocks that not only produce a dividend, but that have large cash reserves on the side. That should be your first priority. Your second priority would be to increase your cash flow even further and diversify into bonds. Now, I would argue that AAA rated bonds probably aren't your best bet, although they are the safest, 
I would argue that triple B or maybe even dipping down into junk bonds for a higher yield is even better for you. Thirdly, I would focus internationally. Now, it's safe to say if we have a Great Depression era event, it's going to be another global financial crisis just like it was in 2008. And that is simply because the global economy is so tightly linked together that if one area falls, especially as big of an economy as the United States is, it's safe to say that the rest of the world will be affected as well. But you should also try and diversify in internationally and lastly, go towards commodities. Now commodities like gold, silver, oil, and so on are really good hedges, but more so they really only count when hyperinflation runs rampant. Regular inflation doesn't really do well for gold or oil, regular inflation helps stocks. So although you can diversify and cut some of your principal losses down investing in commodities, don't expect that one sector to skyrocket in the event of another Great Depression. I also wanna point out that your principal will take a hit. No matter where you put your money, your principal will definitely take a hit. But focusing on cash flow and the returns that your investment can provide to you means you have more options to invest and buy things that are on sale during this depression. As an example, if you bought your family house in 2008 before the market crash hit the real estate market, and then after the bust, you saw your house lose 50% of its equity in a matter of months. Yeah, that really stinks, but if that's your forever home and you have no intent on selling it, then the price of that home really doesn't matter because you're never gonna sell it and see those prices. The same thing is true in setting up this portfolio in expectation of another Great Depression. Investing in rental real estate produces you cash flow, whether the price of the home goes up or down. If you never intend on selling that home, then you collect the market rent and pay down the debt that you do owe on it. I just wanna make that as crystal clear as possible, that in the event of another Great Depression, you will probably lose to the crashes. However, if you set it up properly, the amount of dividends and cash flow you're going to receive in return will more than make up for it. And if you use those to reinvest and buy everything when it's so cheap, then however long it takes for the markets to recover to what they used to be, you'll see even more profits than you had to start with. Hope you got value in this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps push this channel out there. If you ever had a question, comment, want something addressed, or even wanted to recommend a topic for a later video, feel free to message me on either my dedicated Facebook or Instagram account. I don't post there too often, but I'm on there scrolling pretty much every day. So that'd be a really good place to reach me if you can't reach me here in the comment section. Either way though, the choice is yours, and I'll see you in the next episode.